The saga of the Loch Ness Monster should be well known to people familiar with the early 80s and 90s UFO hunter shows and cryptid pseudo-documentary style shows that predated ancient aliens. Shows like Sightings and Unexplained Mysteries. Hell, local and syndicated news stations even ran reports about Bigfoot and Nessie when I was growing up, semi-regularly. While most of the reports around the Loch Ness Monster have been attributed to hoaxes of varying degrees, a British outdoorsman who was canoeing through Loch Ness for a charity event claims he's captured the cryptid in raw footage. But is this really the Loch Ness Monster or a case of pareidolia? Let's find out. But before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. The Loch Ness Monster is a cryptid that has been a part of Scottish mythology for about 1500 years. Cryptid is sometimes defined as an animal whose existence is unsubstantiated, aka bullshit. Think creatures like Bigfoot or La Chupacabra. These creatures are more akin to urban legends than anything else. The Loch Ness Monster is really no different. Mythical Nessie allegedly lives in Loch Ness, a freshwater lake not too far from Iverness, Scotland. Reports of some kind of aquatic beast living in the lake stretch back 1500 years, but all efforts to capture or find evidence of the massive beast have ultimately failed. Loch Ness is located in the Scottish Highlands. It's also the largest body of fresh water in all of Great Britain. The lake reaches a depth of 243 meters. 800 feet, and runs 37 kilometers in length, 23 miles. Researchers following the Loch Ness Monster cite that there are at least a dozen different references to a monster living in Loch Ness, all dating back to 500 CE, when local Picts carved something resembling an aquatic creature into standing stones near the lake. But the earliest reference to something monstrous dwelling in Loch Ness is from a biography from the 7th century. The biography of St. Columba, the Irish missionary who introduced Scotland to the Christian faith, describes a scenario that sounds like it would fit a Dark Ages Call of Cthulhu campaign more than it would reality. It goes like this, in 565 CE, St. Columba was on his way to pay a visit to the King of the Northern Picts. Columba stopped at Loch Ness to confront a beast in the lake that was rumored to have been killing people. According to the quote-unquote biography, St. Columba saw a large beast rearing up and attacking a man near the lake, but thanks to Columba's intervention, and allegedly the invocation of the name of God followed by the words, go back with all speed, the creature was sent back, never to harm another man again. In 1933, after the construction of a new road along the shore of Loch Ness that allowed for a clear view of the lake, the Iverness Courier reported that a local couple had seen an enormous animal rolling and plunging on the surface. This sighting gradually catapulted the Loch Ness Monster to global stardom, attracting tourists of all types to the lake. British newspapers even sent reporters to Scotland to investigate the claims, and London's Daily Mail hired a big game hunter named Marmaduke Wetherell you heard that right, to hunt the creature down and capture it. This hunt resulted in Marmaduke Wetherill claiming to have discovered the footprints of a massive four-legged animal. The Daily Mail went with the headline, Monster of Loch Ness is not legend, but a fact. Folks, here's why I don't trust the Daily Mail. Tourists flocked to Loch Ness, carrying deck chairs or arriving in boats, all of them waiting for a glimpse of the monster. In those footprints that Marmaduke had allegedly discovered, they were cast in plaster and sent to the British Natural History Museum, where researchers analyzed them and heralded Marmaduke as a legendary hunter who found a long lost dinosaur. I'm just kidding, they were total fakes. It turns out that the footprints that Marmaduke, good old Marmaduke, had allegedly discovered were made by a hippopotamus foot. And not only that, but a hippopotamus foot that had been stuffed. So, not only had Marmaduke faked the footprints, but he also made four footprints with one foot. Have you ever seen someone with two left feet? Oh, Marmaduke, what a rascal. The reveal that the footprints were a shoddily put together hoax temporarily deflated the mania surrounding old Nessie. But in 1934, a now infamous photograph depicting a long-necked dinosaur-esque creature poking its head out of the lake revitalized the dying craze. Speculation began to pour in without a speculation alarm in sight. Damn it, spoke too soon. 
Thank you, computer. You can stop now. Wild claims, like Nessie being a lone survivor of plesiosaurs, a long extinct species of dinosaur, began to be tossed about. However, there were problems with this idea, considering that Loch Ness was frozen over during the recent ice ages, and plesiosaurs were cold-blooded, meaning that old Nessie would have had to have made its way up the river within the past 10,000 years. A more plausible idea was that it could have been an archaeocyte, a type of primitive whale with a serpentine neck. The only trouble with this is that archaeocytes have been extinct for the last 18 million years. Skeptics claim that people were seeing sieches rather than any kind of monster. Sieches are oscillations in the water's surface caused by the inflow of cold river water into the warmer waters of Loch Ness. Since the 1930s, the search really hasn't abated. Even the revelation that the infamous 1934 photograph of the beast was a hoax hasn't slowed cryptid chasers. There have been full-on hunts orchestrated by Boston's Academy of Applied Scientists and other British universities. These searches involved the use of sonar and underwater photography, but none of them generated any credible evidence. Now though, that may have changed, or has it? Plesiosaurs, the species of dinosaur most often associated with Nessie, were previously thought to have thrived in the Jurassic period, but weren't really present in the fossil record past the end Jurassic extinction event. In 2017, that changed, as it was revealed that they had actually survived that fateful extinction event, though only to meet their extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period, when the Chicxulub asteroid slammed into the Earth, ending the lives of all non-avian dinosaurs on the planet. The question has been proposed, however, in light of this semi-new information on the species, if whether or not these quote-unquote dinosaurs could have survived the KPG extinction event as well. Could they simply be hiding in the depths of our unexplored oceans? Unfortunately, plesiosaurs weren't dinosaurs in the sense that Velociraptor or Deinonychus were. They were reptiles, and as such, they had physical requirements that would suggest that if they had survived, we'd basically see them all the time today. For one, they breathed air. If plesiosaurs were still around today, they'd have to come up for air every once in a while, just like whales and dolphins. The fact that they were reptiles also means that they would be very susceptible to colder temperatures. They were also very large predators. All our current research suggests that they would have fed on belemonites, which are a kind of squid-like animal from the time when plesiosaurs lived, and fish. A few fossils even preserve the gut area of the animal, revealing that they used to swallow stones to grind up food in their stomachs. If animals as large as the plesiosaur still existed, we'd see its impact on the biosphere. And frankly, there just isn't any evidence that they didn't die out 66 million years ago. Sad, I know, but those are the facts. And that brings us to the video in question. The operator of the drone has said that he's not really sure what it was that was hanging out near the beach, but looking at it myself, it's hard to tell if there was actually something in the footage or if it's just a trick of the light on the water. This could just be a case of pareidolia, which is defined as the tendency for us humans to perceive a specific, often meaningful image in a random or ambiguous visual pattern. We've talked about this phenomenon in the past, too. Think of the face on Mars, as well as the grainy pictures of the moon that people swear hold alien silhouettes or even entire alien bases. Still to this day, in fact, even though images from other angles have revealed what those landforms actually look like. No, they really are alien bases. We're totally taking over your world. I've looked at this footage multiple times, and each time I come away with a different impression. Does it look like there's something large beneath the water? Sure. Could this also be an illusion caused by the way the light is hitting the water? Yeah, absolutely. One thing is for sure though, if there is something lurking beneath the waters of Loch Ness, it's not a plesiosaur. As for whether or not it could be some kind of extinct whale, that's also unlikely. However, a 2019 DNA study conducted by researchers from New Zealand suggested that Nessie was more likely a giant eel of some kind rather than some kind of dinosaur. And lo and behold, the DNA most prominent in the research data was that of the European eel. Professor Neil Gemmel wasn't attempting to hunt for Nessie, but rather, he and his team were looking to improve our understanding of the animal life in the loch. This is what he had to say about the research. People love a good mystery. We've used science to add another chapter to Loch Ness's mystique. We can't find any evidence of a creature that's remotely related to that in our environmental DNA sequence data. So, sorry, I don't think the plesiosaur idea holds up based on the data that we have obtained. So there's no shark DNA in Loch Ness based off of our sampling. There is also no catfish DNA in Loch Ness based on our sampling. We can't find any evidence of sturgeon either. There is a very significant amount of eel DNA. 
with eel DNA found at pretty much every location sampled. There are a lot of them. So, are they giant eels? Well, our data doesn't reveal their size, but the sheer quantity of the material says that we can't discount the possibility that there may be giant eels in Loch Ness. Therefore, we can't discount the possibility that what people see and believe is the Loch Ness Monster might be a giant eel. So yeah, not a dinosaur. Maybe what we're seeing in this footage is just a giant eel. And maybe that's not the answer that monster hunters want. But if someday we find evidence of giant eels in Loch Ness, then I guess that'll solve the mystery. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below. And hey, if you dig dinosaur content, check out this video on the reconstruction of the Spinosaurus and how the original fossil was lost in World War II, right over here. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. No, they really are alien bases. We're totally taking over your world. <laughs>